So I want to say that this is the issue of the hour right now and of the day and of the year. This is really important. The United States has been using direct or indirect military force and sanctions to strong arm the nations of the world into supporting our interests for many years. Diplomacy is a way to manage adversarial relationships in the international sphere seems to have completely died in the 21st century. The United States, who wrote much of the international law that constrains the global community from aggressive wars, has been bullying and battling and leveraging harsh financial sanctions on any nation that has an independent economic or regional policy for more than a decade since the trauma of the attack on 9-11. Iran, however, has not attacked another na nation in more than a hundred years. Iran, on its own, without pressure from the West, formed a parliament and a parliamentary democracy around a hundred years ago. Today, Iranian presidents, like our own, serve a maximum of two four-year terms. When the U.S. allied Shah reigned in Iran, they're trying to draw attention to us. Literacy for women under the Shah was around 15%. Now more than 85% of women in Iran are literate. And like in the United States, there are more women in college than men, and they get better grades than the men too. But the men make more money after graduation, just like us. Iran now has electricity, community wells, sewers, and waste collection in every town and village. Why shouldn't they have a modern, self-sufficient energy program? This year, President Obama's State Department negotiated with Iran, along with our European allies, the UK, Germany, Russia, China, and Australia, to put an end to the economic sanctions that have burdened Iran, and at the same time, gain concessions for Iran that will not allow that will not allow us to be secure, that will now allow us to be secure in the knowledge that their nuclear enrichment program is not feeding a weapons program. This is a major breakthrough for the United States and Iran. We were once allies. Now we've been through a time of deep mutual distrust, but I can tell you that the Iranian people very much appreciate American culture and will be very happy to open relations again. I can tell you because I've been there and talked to them. Our government has signed the Iran nuclear agreement, but our commitments cannot be honored without congressional approval. Unfortunately, there are those in Congress, like Senator Schumer, for instance, who will, who will never be satisfied with the fruits of diplomacy. It isn't enough for them to curtail Iran's nuclear program. They want to see Iran completely under the control of the United States. They say that a nuclear Iran is a threat to the world, but that is irresponsible fear-mongering. Iran is not only a signatory of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but Iran doesn't have any nuclear weapons, not like Pakistan, India, and Israel, who have weapons and have never signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and the United States, which has violated that treaty with impunity. Iran spends far less on military weapons than neighboring Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, or Israel by a factor of 80 to 1. In fact, Iran asserts its power through diplomacy. We should do the same. Louise Slaughter, our local congressional representative, has been a strong proponent of the negotiations for a deal to limit Iran's nuclear enrichment in return for the lifting of harsh sanctions on Iran's economy. She has been a proponent of peace and diplomacy now and throughout her long tenure as our representative. Yay! And we much appreciate her support for the peaceful resolution of international conflicts. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand has also taken a courageous early stance in support of peace and diplomacy as expressed through the Iran nuclear deal. Senator Schumer, however, who has an informal leadership position among Democrats and who aspires to be the Democratic leader in the Senate, 
supports a bill to undermine this diplomatic triumph. He claims it isn't strict enough and the U.S. doesn't have enough control. He wants to see Iranian regional diplomacy end. Something, he tells us, could go wrong as long as Iran is sovereign and free. No doubt something could go wrong. What step forward have we ever taken in life that is entirely without risk? Of course change involves an element of risk, but the old way has already collapsed. When President Obama committed to these negotiations, our allies were already losing interest. Today, the United Nations sanctions have already been dropped, and our friends in the EU are talking business with their Iranian counterparts. This is a done deal. Even so, Senator Schumer is prepared to undermine the actions of a president from his own party. He's using his influence, which is substantial, to block the United States from fulfilling its international obligations. And he's talking about war. What is the cause for this war he's talking about? Iran isn't going to start a war with the United States. Iran doesn't have the capability to fight a war against the United States. And they have made no effort to develop such a capability. Experts agree that Iran has a defensive military establishment. What possible cause could we have to openly go to war against Iran? Is it not enough that the United States and our allies are embroiled in a series of devastating wars across the Middle East? Devastating at least to the people of Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Yemen, the countries where they have been and continue to be fought. Perhaps a diplomatic success with Iran can open the door to further diplomatic successes. Maybe peace with Iran can open the door to more peace with more perceived enemies. I would like to hope that this is the case because we are dealing with many more international conflicts that need to be cooled if we want to avoid war in our future. What is the key here? All or nothing negotiations fail. My way or the highway doesn't cut it in international diplomacy. Backdoor wars that use mercenary armies, proxies, special forces, drones, and special, uh, and special ops to undermine political adversaries and manage developing nations, however imperfectly governed, leave behind a wasteland of carnage, destruction, and broken trust. It's time for a new strategy, a new tactic. Why not respectful multilateral diplomacy? Let's give it a chance. Okay, this action is sponsored by a lot of organizations. I just want to name a few because it's so wide. I couldn't believe it. I didn't write down all the ones from the page. Metro Justice, Peace Action, and Education. That's me. Move on. Progressive Democrats of America, Just Foreign Policy, Code Pink, Roots Action, United for Peace and Justice, Peace Action New York State, Credo, the National Iranian American Council, The Daily Cause, Council for a Livable World, Win Without War. What we have in common is that we all want peace. We want to give peace a chance. So let's give a big shout out to Senator Schumer. All we're saying is give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. One more time. Give peace a chance. Yay! If you can't do that, then shame, shame, shame on you, Senator Schumer. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. And um, Doug Noble now has a few words for you.